So in this tutorial, we're going to be looking at uh, the singleton pattern in PHP. And um, we're going to be looking at creating a database class, which actually um, performs a query, uh, returns uh, the count of how many results have been returned, and then actually allows us to iterate through the results in a t totally object-oriented fashion. So this tutorial is going to cover o uh, OOP concepts, so object-oriented PHP concepts. Um, and it's also going to uh, cover the singleton pattern, which is all about reuse, basically reusing our database handler. So it's a little complicated if you're not used to working with patterns, but hopefully um, you'll understand the use of this or, and actually why we use it. So you can see at the moment on, on the screen, um, we've got the output of, of, you know, the code that we're actually using. So let's just take a look at uh, the code that we're using to do this. So we're requiring in our database class, which is just here, we'll be creating that in the tutorial. Um, and we're creating a variable called users. We're accessing the database class statically, and this is a static method here, uh, get instance. And what that's doing is then chaining on uh, queries. So we're chaining on this query uh, method. We're performing a query, so we're selecting everything we uh, want from users, the users table. We're checking if a count exists. So again, we're sort of chaining on this count uh, here. Or we're not chaining it on, but we're um, accessing this count. Um, in fact, yeah, we are chaining on. And then uh, if that's the case, then we are using a for each construct and we're just saying for, for all of the results as user output user name. So all of these properties, again, accessing in uh, an object oriented fashion. So that's uh, the usage of this. And the, the whole point of a singleton uh, pattern is that we can do this as many times as we want, um, but, you know, and use the same database um, object, if you like, the, the class that we create. But we're not going to perform multiple connections to a database. Now, you might be thinking, you know, why on earth are we doing this? Well, the reason I like using this is the beauty of saying DB get instance, and we can call get instance anything we like. We could even replace this with a functionality of query. Um, but, you know, that's up to you once you've sort of learned why this happens and why we use this. And then what we can do is we can chain things on. So it's very natural uh, to sort of chain uh, things on. We could, of course, you know, do this. Uh, it would be exactly the same thing. Um, but yeah, the reason I like this is because we can we can reuse it in this fashion. It's a lot easier to write. Um, it's easier than, you know, um, using MySQL I or PDO or anything like that. Um, without a wrapper. So we're essentially creating a database wrapper, which makes it super easy uh, to connect to our database, um, to query our database, return results, um, result counts, and anything you want, really. So um, what we'll do is uh, we'll dive in now and actually start creating this class. So I'll go ahead and, uh, and blank this, and we'll, we'll get started. Okay, so we are starting from uh, a completely clean slate here. Uh, we're going to be building up this class. And as we go along and build this up, we'll actually look at how we use it along the way. Um, we'll also then look at the benefit of the singleton class, where you, uh, singleton pattern we're using to do this. So the first thing we need to do is inside of our db.php is actually define this class, which is as easy as just class db, uh, and then our opening and closing bracket. Now inside index.php, we'll want to go ahead and require this in. So require once classes forward slash db.php. You can see if I open my directory structure, I've got a folder here called classes and, uh, and db just here. So once we've done that, we want to go ahead and start looking at what kind of uh, properties we want to store uh, or the main property that we want to store that's actually going to make this a singleton pattern. Um, so we say we want a public static um, um, variable or property called instance. And the reason it's static is because we're going to uh, be accessing this with a static method. So we need a static property here. So the static method um, is going to be get instance as we saw in the last example we're not going to pass anything into this because um, this will uh, this will be accessed just uh, basically to do the checks within it um, and what this is going to do is it's going to check for an instance of this uh, class now this might be a little confusing but please bear with me so what we're going to do is we're going to say if not is set so if this particular thing isn't set we're going to use self to reference this class uh, itself remember we're not instantiating anything so we can't use this um, and we want to say self instance so if that's not set we want to say self instance equals a new db so we are um, instantiating this here and then applying it to this or storing it in this property here then what we want to do is finally return self instance 
Now, this might look totally confusing, but I'll try and explain this as best as I can. Now, what's happening is um, when we create a new object, so we want to say, uh, let's just say we'll, we'll call it sort of on its own, uh, we'll say get instance. So if that's the case, um, what's going to happen is um, we'll go ahead here and we'll echo, um, we'll just cut, I don't know, um, instantiated, if that's how you spell instantiated. So um, we get this, we get, we get this come up here. Um, now what happens is then if we were to do this again, so inside of our index.php, if we were to do this again, we'll do it three times just to, to make sure. Now we should only get this up once. So it only happens once. And this is because in our code, we have already, um, we've already set this to here. Um, we've already instantiated the object, stored it in this instance property. Um, and therefore, all we do is return the instance. And because we're returning the instance, we can then chain other methods on. So public function query, we're gonna, which we're going to use to actually query, uh, we'll pass in a SQL string. Um, this will actually be able to then be chained on. So let's just take this as an example and we'll echo um, query. So now what we can do is, um, in fact, we'll echo inst here as well. Um, so what happens now is when we um, when we you know call query here. So let's do this here. Then what's going to happen is when we refresh. Um, oh, missing arguments. Let's just uh, let's just pop that in. Um, when we do that, what's going to happen is we're going to get inst and then query. So we instantiate and then we uh, won't, then we query it. Now, if we were to do that again and again and again and again, as we did in the previous example, um, you'll see three. Now, what's going to happen is we're going to get, well, let's have take a look. We're going to get inst and then query three times. The reason being is that we only need to instantiate once and then we query three times. We can query our database as much as we want. It doesn't matter to us. So um, what we're going to do now is um, we will get rid of this. We'll get rid of this here because we've seen that it sort of works. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to do something inside of here. Um, we're going to use the magic method uh, construct, which is actually going to connect to our database because that's really, really important. So public uh, function construct. And what we're going to do here is we're going to connect to our database and then we'll actually have the ability to chain the query method on once we've connected. Now, bear in mind what's going to happen is that this is only ever going to be run once because we're only ever going to instantiate if we've already done this. So if we, for example, put a thing in here, so let's say connect to DB and then echo query. And in here we do this three times. It's going to have exactly the same result as when we echoed out here. So if I just go ahead and refresh, connect to DB. So we only need to ever do that once, but we might need to query three times. Uh, so that's where this the usefulness of the singleton pattern comes in. So now that we've done that, um, what we're going to do is actually, you know, connect to our database. So we want to store some other things here. So I'm going to store some private uh, properties. The first one is going to be MySQL I. Um, the second one, we might as well set these all up now is going to be the query. So when, when we actually perform the query, we want the, the result th from this. Um, we're also going to build up a set of results. So that's going to be an array. And we also want the count as well. So that's going to be zero by default. And the reason I've set this to an array, an empty array by default, and this account of zero by default is that we're going to be returning these. So if we don't have any results, we want to just return this anyway. Uh, and that's going to return us zero results. Uh, the same with this, we'll just return an empty array. Um, if not, uh, and this will avoid sort of problems on the on the front end people that aren't uh, or that are just making use of this class. Um, and that will just allow them to see, oh yeah, it's an empty array. Maybe I should check the count before I start looping through results. Um, so in construct, let's go ahead and apply a new MySQL uh, I object to MySQL I property. So we'll say this. And remember, we can use this now because we're in the um, we're in sort of uh, when we hit the constructor, we're in 
um, an instantiated object. So we instantiate it here so we can then use the this um, to refer to the object itself. So MySQL I equals new MySQL I, same as MySQL uh, stuff, but we're obviously object oriented. So we're going to connect to localhost. Uh, root is the username, no password, and I have a database set up called Singleton. So let's just quickly take a peek at that. Um, we've got a yep database here called Sing Singleton, four records here, uh, and a table called users. So that's all we really need to set up. And there's the structure, uh, just quickly set up for the purpose of this tutorial. So now what we want to do is we want to actually check if there was a connection error. You don't need to do this, but I always like to do it. Uh, and it sort of uh, kills the script and gives a, a little message. Uh, this will automatically give a message, but this sort of uh, is a nice way to give a, a tidy message. So we're basically going to say if this MySQL I connect error. So if a connection error has been stored, we want to kill the script. Um, and we just want to output this MySQL I connect error. Perfect. So uh, let's go ahead and give this a go and just test if this works. So yeah, we connect to our database. We've not queried anything at the moment. Well, we've hit the query method, but we haven't actually done anything. Let's just change this to singleton A and just check if that still uh, gives us the error or if it does give us the error, it should do. There we go. So there's the warning generated by instantiating the MySQL I object or class. And then here's our message that we kill the script with. Um, so that's um, obviously not ideal, but uh, it gives the user that's using the uh, class the right message. So um, in the next part of this uh, of this video, we're going to actually look at building up this query uh, and actually make use of this um, of this uh, you know this database class that we're actually using and actually make this usable um, and uh, and cool to use.